pounds of toilet paper a year. So how did shelves end up looking like this? When the coronavirus pandemic hit, toilet paper sales in the U.S. jumped by 845 percent. We're talking $1.45 billion in sales in just one month. We saw this. No, we didn't. Look familiar? If I don't wear perfume one day, I will survive. But if I do not manage to go to the loo in a way that is satisfying to me, I'm going to have a headache. But the run on toilet paper wasn't the only problem. We spoke with a consumer behavior expert to figure out why this phenomenon is happening. Then we got a peek well, inside two actually, toilet paper factories to see I don't know what she said it. for the companies making the product. From March 2nd to May 2nd, toilet paper sales were up 71% year over year in the U.S., making it the most purchased item at grocery stores across the country. Guys, guys sales might have kept. I could be wrong about this, but I feel like the word expert has been misused. Uh, it, 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 it's been pretty crazy. Oh, what is it? What is, what, is, what is expert, dude? Rising if it weren't for empty shelves, both in real life uh, she and is, but on Amazon. I mean, others. Along with the US, a run on toilet paper happened in Norway, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Australia. But in other countries, toilet paper wasn't the hot commodity. In India, people bought up wheat flour. In China, it was a run on rice. It is whatever makes you comfortable. It's something that will last and it won't spoil. Then there's the fear you feel when you're staring at an empty aisle. People start to, to be really scared that, look, I'm not going to get the, <laughs> the paper that I need. Fear is strong. <laughs> so whenever they had the opportunity, they would clear out the, the shelf as soon as it restocked. Toilet paper allows them to exert some kind of control over a universe that is completely out of control. It's not just the scared hoarders who are emptying shelves. It looks like the there's chat, also yeah. a divided supply chain. The toilet paper industry consists of two worlds the consumer market, the small rolls in your bathroom at home, and the commercial market, the big rolls you use when you're away from home. So it's schools, it's office buildings, it's restaurants, it's other food service, hotels. A lot of that business obviously has been shuttered due to the pandemic. Wait, hold up, where's that, where's that, where's that? Okay, no, I'm sorry. Pandemic. Though people aren't necessarily going to the bathroom more, they are going more at home. Toilet paper company Georgia Pacific estimated people were using 40% but... more at home paper. So we're using more small rolls. But can't companies that make the big stuff just start making the small stuff? Yeah, but well, it's not that why easy. Toilet paper, There's not a machine that will take commercial bath tissue to then retail bath tissue. At home paper requires different input paper, packaging, and different machine configurations. Which means companies in the at home sector were pretty much on their own to meet an unprecedented demand. And they could because barely keep that. shelves stocked. Toilet paper production normally looks like this. One company makes what are called parent rolls. Here, a mixture of paper and water called pulp is made. Pulp. The water is squeezed out, and the remaining pulp is stretched out into thin sheets. I it's get the heated pulp and rolled out. into massive nine-foot rolls. There are about 46 <laughs> miles of paper in just one of these. Step two, these parent rolls are sent to what's called a converter, a company that cuts them down into individual rolls. We unwind the rolls, apply them together, put the emboss on them, put the perforations in, roll them up, and then cut them up into stuff that you and I would mm -hmm. use. Vince's company, Cardinal Tissue, is a converter in North Carolina. Like most in the industry, Vince's manufacturing line okay. is already pretty guys, much at capacity. Guys, it's I have to say, chat. a low-cost product. So to guys, when we have EU funny streamers in the morning, okay? Like, I mean, that's not really the morning, but it's like one, okay? It's like chat wars, all that. You, can, you chill out, guys. Something like NA this, EU that, Australia this, Asia that. Shut up, dude. Shut the fuck up, dude. Who asked? already producing a lot quickly. Most tissue manufacturers didn't have vital equipment. We run our plants 24-7. Over in Maine, Tissue Plus looked a little different before the pandemic. Within those three weeks, I have learned more in my entire life. This guy launched the startup from his dorm room in 2019. By January 2020, he hadn't even turned on his machines yet. But now machines are running non-stop. Damn! To match demand, these two companies had a few tricks up their sleeves. Both had warehouses filled with stock. Pretty good. We emptied the warehouse and then ended in a situation where we're really just loading it straight onto a truck and getting it out as it's made. Vince narrowed down his product portfolio. He went from producing over a dozen products to just three or four. That cut down on the time it took to change over machines to make the different products. 
across the board, manufacturers told their customer base, hey, these hey, machines, look, they we're, we're going like to give you a fewer options for this period of time because we can't millions get Millions and millions of dollars. The company also stopped throwing away any defective rules and sold those too. A lot of places said, look, it's better to have a roll of toilet paper with tail that is intact down than to have nothing. Tissue Plus made a more radical change. Instead of going through distribution center to deliver this is actually pretty interesting chat. We enjoyed this video. literally had to adapt our little family on business to become a direct to consumer. In March 2019, Jake started an e-commerce site. Well, and started delivering. Wait, I built twenty five dollars. Says, hey man, a month ago, um, I said I was failing. I went to the university. You read my comment and said, no, do it, man. And today, a uh, dude, I did not believe that I did not fail my semester. Thank you, much love. Oh, sure, man. Much love, dude. Toilet paper through FedEx, straight to consumers' doors. Not planned for, but it's the largest segment of the business. Now, Tissue Plus is making over twenty five thousand oh, a, a day. And it's getting orders from all over the world. Uh, contact from Iceland who reached out and asked if we could spare a container of toilet paper for them. And I said, I wish I could spare a container for you. I wish I could spare a truck, but we can barely fill a truck right now with the demand that's getting okay. out the door. Jake's hoping to automate packages. This is pretty good. Okay, next.